Interpower Corporation, the premier supplier of power system components with a one-week manufacturing lead time, over 4 million parts in stock, and no minimum order requirements. Let Interpower be your warehouse. Today on Engineering Newswire, we're refitting unmanned helicopters, marveling at DECA's new prosthetic arm, and driving a Corvette race car hands-free. The Rotary Bat is an on-man helicopter system that combines Northrop Grumman's autonomous control systems with Yamaha Motors RMAX remotely piloted helicopter. With more than 25 years of experience producing remotely piloted helicopters, Yamaha will be providing its proven airframe that has accumulated more than 2 million flight hours, being used for agricultural support in Japan and providing support to more than 2.3 million acres of farmland per year. To turn this agricultural copter into a product useful to a securities and defense company, Grumman has equipped the Rotary Bot, or RBAT for short, with autonomous control and intelligence gathering technologies that are used in applications such as power line inspection, search and rescue, and forest fire observation. The RBAT's flight ceiling is 6,000 feet with a data length range of around 80 miles, and measuring 12 feet in length by 3.5 feet in height, its payload capacity is 43 pounds. The copter will join Northrop Grumman's family of unmanned aircraft systems used for tactical intelligence, surveillance, and reconnaissance missions. And the company is already planning a demonstration for the U.S. Navy next month. Former Indy League racer Sam Schmidt got back behind the wheel to race a Corvette down an Air Force test track. The Indy star took the 2014 Corvette C7 Stingray to the limit with speeds of nearly 85 miles per hour. Except Schmidt is a quadriplegic which was the result of a spinal cord injury suffered during a race testing accident in 2000. So, the VET was in fact a semi-autonomous motor car designed by the Air Force Research Lab and Ball Aerospace and Technologies. The car is controlled by a ball cap with reflective spheres that are monitored by infrared cameras around the dashboard in front of Schmidt. He controls the car by moving his head left to drive the car to the left and right to make the car turn right. Speed is increased by moving his head forward and back to increase the set speed by 10 miles per hour each time, and braking is controlled with a pressure sensor in his mouth. Schmidt's vitals were monitored through radio wireless telemetry, and according to the researchers, this type of monitoring lays the groundwork for other combined human automation systems. I just wonder what happens when road rage ensues, and I mean, the car breaks when you clench your teeth, I, I'm never going to get anywhere. The DECA arm system from New Hampshire-based DECA Integrated Solution has gained FDA approval. The arm system is an advanced electromechanical prosthetic upper limb with near natural control that can perform multiple simultaneous powered movements controlled by electrical signals from electromyogram or EMG electrodes. According to the FDA, the EMG electrodes detect electrical activity caused by the contraction of muscles close to where the prosthesis is attached and then send the electrical signals to a computer processor in the prosthesis that translates them to a specific movement or movements. The system can convert electrical signals into up to 10 powered movements, and it is the same shape and weight as an adult arm. It also features a combination of mechanisms including switches, movement sensors, and force sensors that cause the prosthesis to move. The FDA reviewed clinical information relating to the device, including a foresight department of Veterans Affairs study in which 36 DECA arm system study participants provided data on how the arm performed in common household and self-care tasks. The study found that approximately 90% of study participants were able to perform activities with the DECA arm system that they were not able to perform with their current prostheses, such as using keys and locks, preparing food, feeding oneself, using zippers, and brushing and combing hair. While the system can be configured for limb loss occurring at the shoulder joint, mid-upper arm, or mid-lower arm, it cannot be configured for limb loss at the elbow or wrist joint. Do you have story ideas? Comment below and we'll cover them in an upcoming episode. For the PD&D channel, I'm Chris Fox, and this has been your Engineering Newswire.